Welcome back boys and girls and today I want to introduce you to my most treasured rifle. This is Brownie and this is chambered in 243 and isn't that a beautiful rifle? I cut this a print because it's got that really royal family kind of look to it and you will not believe how I got my hands on this. This rifle is truly a beautiful rifle. And if you look at the, the engraving and checkering on it, that's just awesome. Do you have one of those days that you just know it was blessed from God, not just the luck? Well, this was one of those days. A little bit more than 10 years ago, uh, the church that I was attending, I got to know this very nice uh, elderly gentleman. And we got to talking, and when he heard that I, I was into hunting and shooting, he was a little surprised. And he was saying like, Dr. Park, you actually hunt? And shoot and I said yeah that's you know that's my favorite passing time and he told me that he has two guns that he never even fired and it's in his head and he got it from his dad so I asked him what kind of gun do you have he told me he had a, a, a Browning rifle and Smith & Wesson revolver and when I heard that and it just went like boom so I asked him you know I could take him out shooting and teach him how to shoot and so on and he said he's not really interested in shooting he, he, you know, he never was into shooting at all and even his dad was not much of hunter or shooter so anyway so I asked him you know uh, I would love to you know take a look at his guns and if it, you know and, and I could actually buy it from him and he seemed like he was interested and then a couple of days later he called me back and said like uh, he looked at the guns, he said the guns, are not, guns were not even in the gun case, he didn't even have a gun case. They were wrapped in a cloth and it was in his attic for years. He said he didn't even remember last time he looked at it. But when he looked at it, the gun was rusted up and uh, you know the, uh, the wooden grip on the revolver was chewed by a mouse. He, said, he told me you know, it had a bunch of uh, teeth mark in it. And, and he asked me, are you still interested? And I told him, uh, if it's Browning and Smith & Wesson, I am definitely interested. So next weekend he brought it out, I looked at it, and one of them was this beautiful rifle here. It's a uh, bolt action uh, made by Browning, and it's chambered in 243. And the other rifle, I mean, other gun that he brought out was this Smith & Wesson revolver, model 19-5 in 357 Magnum. So, First thing I did was I looked at down the both uh, the crown of both barrels and they looked fine. I mean they looked flawless, but it did look pretty rough. It had a lot of rust here and there, and the the revolver that I showed you had a bunch of a teeth mark there. And I asked him, so how much do you want for it? And without a hesitation, he says uh, he'll take a thousand dollars for it. So I bought it from him. After I bought it, I took it to the gun shop and asked the gentleman there uh, if he knew anything about this gun. And he told me to leave it with him for about a week and he'll get back to me. So about five days later, he called me back and I went back and he told me uh, this rifle is definitely made by Browning and it was made in Finland. In fact, it says made in Finland on the barrel. And he told me this was made in summer 1960s and this was custom made rifle. And because it's got a very unique uh, wooden gun stock, it's, it's very heavy, wide, and it's engraved everywhere. And it's got a really nice, you know, checker into it. And he told me this, this was uh, like a custom made rifle from Browning. And he told me that the function of the gun has no problem whatsoever, but it does need some work on the cosmetic look wise. He told me the barrel inside looked okay, it just needs some cleaning. And he said uh, he could take it off my hand for 1500 And I asked him, what is this rifle worth? And he, he told me if this gun was in a real good condition, it'd be worth somewhere around 2500 But when he told me 1500 that was a kind of sign to me that I don't want to let this go. I didn't want to let it go anyway because, I mean, I didn't buy it to make a profit. I bought it because it looked really, really nice. And I love Browning. So anyway, so I... So I told him, let me think about it, and never went back to the gun shop again. But anyway, uh, I actually cleaned it up myself, and it turned out pretty nice. Uh, 
and uh, the coating on the the gun stock is actually uh, original. I did not put another coat on it, but this was in a very very nice shape. And when I first bought this, this had a very big kind of bulky looking uh, scope on it. It had a red field a rifle scope and the quality of the scope was not that great uh, I mean it looked at kind of the image wasn't very clear but when I shot it yeah uh, it was shooting at 100 yards it was shooting like about two and a half three inch group and uh, I wasn't happy with the group but I was happy with a uh, rifle it looked at beautiful so I know so I knew I could do better so I went ahead and put a, a Nikon Pro Staff BDC scope on it, a power from 4 to 12, and I also put a barrel stabilizer on it. And you know what? Sub MOA sub at 100 is not a problem with this rifle. I don't have much information on this rifle except for what you see here. I tried to do some research on the internet, but I couldn't find much information. And the ones that I found uh, in the internet, uh, Browning rifles that was made in Finland in 1960s, uh, it could go anywhere between 2500 to about $10,000. But I still couldn't find any rifle that had this really beautiful wood stock on it. So I like to think this rifle is more on the higher end. This rifle weighs in at 9 pounds and 9 ounces. Uh, with scope and everything. This has 24 inch barrel on it and this is not a thin barrel. It's actually a semi heavy barrel. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I put the barrel stabilizer on it to improve the accuracy. And as I mentioned, it's got a really beautiful wood stock. The grade and the carving and the engravings on it are just awesome. And if you look at the, the the quality of the wood is really really beautiful and the action on this rifle is actually quite smooth and as you've seen it's empty what really surprised me was that safety system this actually already had three stage safety I thought that was something new but apparently it's not so if you have it all the way in the back is in a complete safety where you cannot work the action and you cannot fire and if you have it halfway you can work the action but you cannot fire now if you have it forward all the way you will fire and I just want to show you this this has one of the best triggers that I've seen. It's got no creep, it's very crisp, breaks like a glass, and it feels like about three and a half to four pounds, more like three and a half, which I'm very happy with it. And on this side here, that right there, that's to release your bolt and Honestly, that's about all I know about this gun and the fact that this thing shoots like a dream and Every ladies in my house and my friends who actually shot this Want to shoot this rifle only they don't want to shoot anything else because this thing is very soft shooting very accurate and having this very wide a uh, foreign wood stock here it sits on the sandbag or whatever the gun rest you have very very uh, flat and very stable so uh, even the beginners are able to shoot quite well with this rifle i've shot both of these ammunitions with this rifle and they're both by honori and one is custom and the other one is super performance now they both have 95 grain with sst bullet and uh, velocity wise the the custom comes out of the barrel at 29.50 feet per second and super performance come out, comes out of the barrel at 31.85 feet per second and at, at 500 yards the custom will drop 
20, uh, 45.8 inches and the super performance will drop 38.4 inches. So there is some a difference there. Now, for some reason, this rifle shoots super performance better than custom. Now, I could do I could sub them away with both ammunitions, but with a custom, it's right about one inch group. But with super performance, I could get it down to about half inch group. So this is the only thing that I show with. Now, I've never hunted deers. Uh, I've never deer hunted with a 243 before uh, until I got this rifle. And I shot two deers with with the super performance. And this thing has no problem taking other deers. I mean, they didn't drop on the track, but they didn't go far. They went maybe about 20, 30 yards and dropped. And the damage inside was pretty bad. So I have no problem trusting this rifle as a deer hunting rifle. And now let's hit the range and see what he can do on the papers. Well, here was the first shot at 100 with the Brownie 243. I'll be shooting the left middle target. Second shot. Through the window, so let's wait a bit. That's the bullseye. Forgot to push the record button on my third shot, but I made a first two good shots. And on the second shot, it knocked the stick, the rest stick out. And on the third shot, I put just a little, I knew I put it, then I didn't get one more shot. To be fair, it's what happens. Right, it was the fourth shot. I just hope I don't make it worse in the third shot, but we'll see. I still don't have the center stick on, so. That makes it a little bit difficult, but it's pretty good. Let's see. And um, really what I'll do is, yeah, when that time is up, yeah, we'll just keep monitoring the line. And by that, most people are, you know, cognizant, they'll stand up and move to the back. And some of the, the muzzles are going to be out there. They'll take their time. But the time is up. Alright, here's my shot. That was my first, second, and then I took. The, I know I put the third shot, so I took another shot. But it actually went through the same first shot hole, and I was a little confused. So I took another shot. So this is a four shot group right here, which is really decent. It is beautiful day in Virginia today, and my wife made one of my favorite muffin, which is sweet banana with sliced almond. Mm mm mm. That was my first shot. And then that was my second shot. And that's when the red sticker flew off. And on my third shot, I knew I pulled it as soon as I pulled the trigger. And I also forgot to uh, hit the record button on my cell phone. But after making a bad third shot, I decided to give her another chance. So I took the fourth shot. But from a, at 100 yards, I could only see three holes. And no matter how carefully I looked at it, I, I only saw three holes. So I thought I missed the whole target for some crazy reason. So I went ahead and took a fifth shot. And that's where it hit. And when I came to the target, I realized this actually had two holes in it. So if you look at it, uh, there's, there's just a smidge less than three quarters of an inch. And if you count the one that I pull, that's one and a quarter inch. So having four shots within three quarters of an inch 
it's really good. It's really decent. And if we count the one that I pulled, that's one and a quarter inch. But on a good day, I could do half inch three shot glue with this rifle. But for today, I'm happy with this. And yes, I will do my review on the Smith & Wesson in the future. And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have, enjoy your life with what you got, but mostly remember, it's better to be blessed than lucky. See ya.